This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the president and CEO of Abacus Mining and Exploration, Mr. Paul Anderson. Paul, nice to have you back on. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks, Gerardo. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be back. How are you? I am well. Thank you for asking. A lot going on. I know that we haven't chatted in a couple of months and a lot has happened since then and a lot is happening now. We know that in Nevada, you announced the commencement of drilling at the Willow property, which we're all excited about. So I want to get an update there. And then I also know that we got results from Jersey Valley that were, were, were not what we hoped for. And Jersey Valley, of course, was always that early stage exploration prospect that we hope would yield the discovery. And I believe that property, the option on that property has been dropped. And you're now focusing on, of course, the, the, the targets, the exciting targets at Willow. Um, can you speak to Jersey Valley a bit? And then I would love to get an update on how things are coming along over at Willow in Nevada. Yeah, that's fine. Um, well, for Willow, or for uh, Jersey Valley, basically, um, you know, we picked that property up uh, a little less than two years ago. Uh, we had great hopes for it. It was a sort of a classic epithermal gold property. Um, there was previous drilling done about 15 years ago, which seemed to indicate that um, perhaps there might be further uh, potential along strike or at depth. Um, and so we went in and tested that. We, we started by basically doing uh, some more geophysics. And we did, in fact, um, extend the anomalies along strike quite a ways. Uh, we had one that was about 700 meters, one was about 900 meters long. And then we went and tested it with drilling earlier this year. And as you're aware, um, the drilling, uh, we basically, we hit, the, we hit the structures and they were um, gold and silver bearing, but very weakly so. So we were disappointed in the results. Um, and at the end of the day, we sort of looked at it and thought, okay, um, it doesn't look like it extends along strike through very far. Um, we could go back to where some of the earlier drilling was done and go deeper. Um, and as it was, we've gone down about 300 meters. So you're beyond the depth of a, you know, an open pit operation. And you're really hoping it's going to get better at depth, um, you know, sort of praying that it is, I suppose. And um, we just couldn't see the potential. So we handed back to the uh, the vendors and uh, and moved on. And it's you know it's exploration, uh, as you well know. Um, a lot of prospects simply don't work out, and I think um, a lot of companies make the mistake of you know let's just do one more drill program, one more you know one more kick of the can, and they end up spending a lot of money where they they could sort of make a decision to walk away. So that was our decision. Um, we'd rather focus in on Willow and uh, Ajax, our copper properties, and that's what we've done. So I don't know if you have any questions or comments about Jersey Valley before I move on to Willow. No, Paul, I think I, the only comment is as a biased shareholder who's written multiple checks, right? I, I, of course, hoped for better results from Jersey Valley, but I absolutely love um, the stewardship of capital and making sure that we cut our losses and 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 reallocate capital to, to, to better targets and better properties. With that said, you know, you still have a tiny market cap given that you own 20% of a resource that today stands at 2.7 billion pounds of copper. 2.6 million ounces of gold and 5.3 million ounces of silver. That's at much lower prices. I'm speaking, of course, about Ajax. And it's important to note that you're carried through to production on that 20% interest. That's the anchor. The upside, the blue sky potential comes from Willow, which is, of course, a gold and, and, and some would say gold copper a property with multiple copper and gold targets on it. We, we, we made, and I say we because I feel like, you know, we've been following this story together for, for years on end now, Paul, but there was a, a very important discovery that was made as to the structures and the host rock, and now the drill bit is turning. How is that coming along? Um, it's actually doing, uh, going quite well, uh, although quite slowly. Um, we um, were on this, uh, the third hole of uh, uh, basically a four-hole program four hole plan program. Um, and we like what we're seeing in the rocks, but we have hit a lot of um, slowdowns in terms of the program. Um, first of all, the rocks are quite fractured, quite broken, so it's slow drilling. Um, it takes the drillers quite a bit of time to get down to depth. Um, we like that better than uh, the contractor we had a couple of years ago 
who lost two of the three holes because they were just trying to push it, the uh, push the rig a bit too much. So that's preferable, but it's you know it is time consuming. Uh, we've also run into problems that pretty much everybody is having in terms of uh, getting supplies, getting geologists, getting you know all the things you need to do a program. And um, the, one of the problems with supplies is that the supply chains overall are pretty much, um, I don't know if they're broken, but they're certainly bent. Um, the drillers just have problems getting you know, bits and wireline and grease and all sorts of things that they need. And it comes from different suppliers. So one guy gets something in and the other guy doesn't. So we've, we've basically gone to a sort of a two week uh, working on one week off with the drillers just to allow the suppliers to get caught up a bit. And that's working, but it's still, it's still extremely slow. So it's, that's delaying the program. Uh, we've also had things like uh, fires in the area. Uh, lots of smoke, uh, ash running down, raining down <laughs> on the drill site. It sounds like Armageddon, um, Paul. Yeah. Can you give me some good yeah. news? <laughs> well, it's not very, it's not very uh, comfortable for the drillers or the geologists. They basically have um, not been able to drill some days because of that. Um, speaking about my geologist, uh, he got COVID about three weeks ago, uh, ended up in hospital. Uh, he's now out feeling a lot better, but um, you know, that set us back as well. So, it's, you know, it's sort of one thing after another. Um, and that is to say that, you know, we like what we're seeing in the rock so far, but we're, we're way behind in terms of logging the holes and sampling them and that sort of thing. And that's, um, that's just things that are beyond our control. Lost in all the challenges there. And now, well, I don't want it to get lost in all the challenges uh, that you just mentioned is the fact that the drilling, though, progressing slowly because of supply chain issues, COVID issues, fires in the area. Lost in all that is is is, is a comment that you made that I want to cue in on. And I know you're not going to want to say too much, but you said you like what you're seeing as far as the rocks go. Now, I know all of that means nothing until we actually have assays back, but it sounds like as early as it is right now, and I believe you still have several holes left to drill, you are starting to see indications that you're into a system, right? Oh, we're, we're definitely drilling a porphyry system. Um, you know, definitely drilling a porphyry system. Um, the, the rocks are the right, you know, the right looking rocks. Um, the alteration is right. Um, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, as you know, these are, these are quite large systems. Um, the problem is narrowing in on the area where there's economic mineralization as opposed to, you know, alteration. Um, you can't mine alteration, you can't mine mineralization. And these tend to be quite large systems. Uh, one of the other issues is in the Arrington camp, um, what used to be uh, an upright vertical system is now sort of lying over on its side. So it's been, it's been pushed over on its side and it's also faulted so that parts of the system are sort of dragged out to the west quite a ways. So what used to be a sort of an upright system that was maybe four kilometers deep is now about 15 kilometers long east to west. And so some of the later rocks, the unmineralized rocks, are now lying over what we're, we're targeting. So it's a blind um, exploration play. We're trying to see down through the rocks with geophysics, geochemistry, and drilling. And you're basically using the drill, um, the drill rig as a prospecting tool, trying to poke holes down, try to get uh, some some data uh, in terms of geochemistry and assays and that sort of thing. And once you put that all together, you can vector in on the area that you should be going towards. So, um, you know, we haven't. I don't think we've hit a deposit yet, but we're certainly in a in a in a very productive system. And as you know, the Arrington Camp is. Uh, has a number of very large porphyry deposits, some of them been mined in the past. Uh, and Mason is right next door, owned by Hud Bay. Um, they're doing a, a new study to, to look at trying to get it in, into production. Um, you know, some quite large deposits, so we're, we're certainly in the right territory. Um, we're seeing the same sort of rocks as the adjacent properties, uh, same sort of alteration, that sort of thing. And now it's just a matter of um, putting a drill hole in the right place. So we're, we're trying. So you're vectoring into what, what, what you believe and, and, and are confirming here is a porphyry system. Well, we're in a porphyry system. We're vectoring into a deposit within that porphyry system because the, you know, the, 
the, the systems are quite large. The, um, the area of mineralization or is uh, fairly small in comparison to the overall system, the altered rocks. Those can go you know, laterally uh, for kilometers. And what you're looking for is a, you know, is a fairly small target within that. So, um, you know, we haven't hit a deposit yet, but we're, we think we're getting close. Um, certainly, it's giving us a good information in terms of this drilling. It's just a matter of trying to get it logged and sampled and, uh, and get it into the assay labs. And that'll be another um, uh, headache because, of course, everybody's drilling. Everybody's uh, trying to get things into the assay lab. So, um, but we're, we're quite hopeful of what we are seeing. Well, again, as a biased shareholder, I can tell you if you find a deposit of significance, all will be forgiven as far as delays go, Paul. Thank you so much for that thorough, thorough update. I'm looking forward to having you back on here in the next month or two as that core is logged and we start seeing some more progress on the remaining holes that are to be drilled. Absolutely. Well, I'd be happy to come on anytime, as you will, as you know. Appreciate it. Thanks again, Paul. Okay, thanks very much. All right, be safe out there amidst the fires and the COVIDs and the supply chain bot on X. I'm going to try, yes. Thank you. All right, bye now.